Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Prismata. Um, there's a couple things that I realized I should have mentioned in the last couple episodes. I don't remember exactly when all this stuff changed, but um, I did end up changing my <coughs> my uh, Prismata username to Amaloy. Um, I think I mentioned it in an early stream that I, I was Mountbank because I was playing a lot of Dominion when Prismata came out, but these days it's sort of settled on just being Amaloy everywhere. Um, <coughs> I've equipped a couple of new badges here. I went and found the Ossified drone badge that I got for something. I don't really remember doing this, but great. Uh, and we get this one for five games in a row in ranked play. There's rewards for there's, there's badges for eight and for ten as well, which is pretty optimistic. But you know who knows? We might get there sometime. And uh, the other thing that I wanted to just briefly address is like, why do I have losses against Adept Bot in my history here? Uh, He's easier than Masterbot, and I usually beat Masterbot. Uh, why am I even playing Adeptbot? And the answer is, like, I, I was looking through all the badges, and I noticed that there's one for, um... Beating Adeptbot after skipping your first turn. Don't don't even collect drones on turn one. Uh, it turns out it's, like, pretty hard. <laughs> He's not bad enough to lose in that position, unless uh, you play better than I do, or you find some clever unit combo that he doesn't understand. But uh, okay, we're on a six game win streak, so let's just uh, carry on and uh, and a regular ticket should be fine. It's Exyotsuba again. We played him our first time in ranked and then uh, later he resigned because he just like didn't understand what was happening. Okay, so what is this all about? There's a lot of drones. I don't know what the right opening is. Am I player two? Yeah. So I think I'd like to convert to Thorium Dynamos. Do you want to get a Wild Drone to help you do that? Like, what are the attackers in this set? There's not that much, really, right? Arms Race and Shredder? Why Conduit? What's that all about? Scorchilla? Scorchilla shouldn't be good against Thorium Dynamos. It should lose to just, like, Gauss Cannons, right? So, it seems like Arms Race, Tarsier, maybe some blue. Then what are you spending all your green on that you're getting from these Thorium Dynamos? Maybe you actually skip the Dynamos here. Like, with Wild Drone and Vivid Drone, there's fine ways to drone up without having to get Thorium Dynamos. And... You don't want that much green. So... What if you were to, like, Thorium Dynamo plus NG on turn one? Then on the next turn, you'd have four gold. You could buy a Vivid Drone and another NG? That doesn't seem right. That's too high econ. So I think I'd rather just Wild Drone and sort of try and go for... Yeah, Arms Race is very good if your opponent's getting, like... Well, it's good against Wild Drones, isn't it? Because you can deny them the Absorb. Hmm. Maybe I don't want to offer him that. I think I want a Wild Drone. And then maybe I'm just gonna, like... Drone Animus? Or, or Wild Drone again and Animus next turn? Maybe pick up a Thorium Dynamo eventually, but I just want to start getting some Tarsiers going. Uh, I'd like to get blue, I'd like to get green. You know, that's what the Thorium Dynamo is about, I guess. That's the other thing, actually, is I could do, like, a Thorium Dynamo and an Animus here. But then I can't spend my red, so that's why I would prefer to get the Wild Drone. Then I can, like, Tarsier, Tarsier, Drone... So, uh, the, there's anti-synergy between these two, of course, because one of the benefits of Thorium Dynamo is that it's sort of breach-proof, and Vivids are extremely breach-vulnerable. Um, so, there, I mean, 
you can still play both of them as long as you choose not to get breached. You just don't get as much value from the dynamo as you might otherwise. Uh, I still would like to get a Thorium Dynamo, but I can't conveniently do that while building Tarsiers, right? And I think that that's more important to me right now. You know, maybe this... Yes, of course. This drone should have been a Vivid. Then I'd have one more dollar. And I could, like, Tarsier, Tarsier, uh, Thorium Dynamo. But that's really reducing the amount of, uh... Stuff I can do here. Or maybe I would Tarsier Tarsier, like, Blast Forge. This, yeah, that clearly should have been a Vivid Drone. I forgot I have all this engineer, uh, energy floating. Um... I can't, I can't, I don't think I can support this. Ugh, bad turn, awful turn. I need a Blast Forge, and I can't really get one. And I need a Conduit, and I can't get one. Like, maybe this is the idea. No, this needs to be a Blast Forge, I think. Eh, he's not really gonna attack me next turn. I think it's fine if it's a Thorium Dynamo. Next turn I can build two more Tarsiers and a Vivid or something. I don't like how this game is going. I think I, I messed up with my drone timing and also my Vivid drone, my, sorry, my Wild drones are gonna come under fire soon. And I need an answer for, like, what I'm going to do when that happens, which presently I don't have. Um, my opponent can even build arms races, which, like, is even better than usual right now for him. In fact, I think that this Tarsier Scorch is... I see, he's one dollar short. Oh, plus he needs to spend his blue on wall. Fine. So maybe I just build Rhino Blast Forge next turn. Then I'm not building... Like, because I want to defend against this Tarsier, right? Um, that stinks. Uh, I need the Blast Forge to defend against the Scorch that's coming up soon. And also threaten arms races eventually. And I guess I have to build a Rhino? No, he's not attacking yet. I don't have to build a Rhino. I can build one more Thorium Dynamo if I want. Or just like a Tarsier. Doesn't seem great. Obviously I could like drone up, but I'm not gonna have a lot of money to defend myself with next turn and I'm gonna kinda want to, right? Um build another wild drone because he's probably gonna just attack my wild drones actually and if he does I don't really mind it gives me time to develop more stuff let's go with this and I'll build like a mediocre defender or I don't know Ooh, here comes the arms race yeah how much is he attacking for anyway oh six that's brutal Ugh. <sighs> Yeah, he timed that arms race well. But you know what? I'm gonna... I'm gonna just not build a wall next turn, actually. Um, because... I think he wants to attack the wild drones. If he kills my six engineers instead of two wild drones, then his arms race is not really getting that much value. Um, right? Like, what, what bad happens to me if I do this? I'll build a Rhino so it's even worse. You can get five NGs or two Wild Drones, right? Build a Vivid. And another Vivid. 
make use of those engineers he gave me. I kind of like that idea. Now, even if he kills all my wild drones, we're, we're equal on drones. And in attack, it's pretty close. I'm a little worried about converting my drones to Vivids again. Because I, I would like to have force fields available, but I'm going to be spending green on... Uh, actually doing stuff, you know. <laughs> so what if I do like this? I kind of want another Blast Forge to let me keep building arms races while I build a wall. I also kind of want more drones, though, so I can, like, convert them to something better. But I think converting them to force fields is sort of fine. <laughs> He's up in attack, for sure. That's kind of a problem. But I guess that's about to go away when, like, his... His Scorch... Okay, so he's sort of counting on a big Scorch turn. Interesting. This converts three drones, right? Yes. So if I build a Doomed Wall now, it won't be there for the next Scorch Wave. But if I build one next turn, it will be. So I'm going to do something like this. Wall... Shit, I can't Arms Race. That stinks. I'm a dollar short. Maybe should have not Force Fielded and considered offering him the Breach. I think it would be right for him to take it. I'm just going to hold a Rhino here, actually, because all it's doing is killing an Engineer. Um, then I can Arms Race Tarsier or something. Maybe even Conduit? No, I don't need that much green. I hate to sack the Rhino to let me build this Tarsier, though. It doesn't seem like very good value. It's just like, it is pretty good value to build the arms race, so I think I'll go for it. My advantage is that I have two blue, and his advantage is that he has a lot more scorches. I also have more tarsiers, right? And like, just more attacker, more generic attackers from the base set. I mean, I think he's clearly right to attack with everything here. Even though it's a bit awkward for him. He wants to make me lose this Rhino, make it hard for me to, to defend uh, a Scorch. But uh, a Doomed Wall coming in... Actually, maybe last turn was the right turn to build a Doomed Wall? I'm not sure. No, because I couldn't have afforded the Arms Race then. Eh, I could have cut the Tarsier and... Uh, I don't know. It's a bit close. Uh, so if I attack with these guys, build a Doomed Wall and a Wall. Doesn't really defend, huh? Awkward. Alright, hold an attacker. Then I can do this. He exploits me a tiny bit by attacking for... Nine? No, I can block nine. I can block ten. I'm, this is fine. Uh, I hate not attacking with the uh, Steel Splitter, and indeed, I think that that may be why I'm about to lose. I just have a little bit too much tech and not enough gold. It would have been nice to be able to get a Blood Phage in, but like two Tarsiers is 
pretty good compared to a Blood Fate, right? Like, they're okay. I don't know. Either one is okay. Oh, he did exploit by attacking for how much? 11. Okay. This is pretty bad. Yeah, I'm, like, toast here, right? Not much I can do. I don't have any quick defense. Yeah. Okay, just way too much attack for me. So... What, what really happened here? Uh, first of all, this was a mistake. I'm not sure if it was enough. Like... I think having the three, like, good drones is really complicated to analyze. I couldn't figure out how to build an opening that does what I want. But here, obviously, I think a vivid drone is better. Because it means I can do what I want next turn. I did not really anticipate the Scorches being that great. Um, especially with the arms race. Like, meaning that I was able to actually make use of the engineers he gave me, right? I used them to build vivids. I used them so that I could afford to not defend and build up attackers. But, like, what did he do that was so great? Was he way ahead of... You know, let's actually... How was he in economy? It was, like, he, he didn't have much more economy, like, ever. He had less, because he, he caught up. But in damage, he just ramped much faster. He went from zero on turn six to six damage on turn seven by sinking... Uh, his arms race with some with a Tarsier and a Scorch. I see. So that's sort of an interesting thought. Like, that's the thing that I usually try to do is try to build Tarsiers as my first attacker and then sink something a bit faster with the Tarsiers so that you don't have a turn where you're just wasting a bunch of attack. Or wasting two attack into a wall or whatever. Um, and you can do that even more with Scorches, right? You build some Scorches, and then build some Tarsiers to sink them, and then build some Quick Attackers to sink with all that. Um, that's something I haven't really thought about, because I am still used to Scorches the old way, where, like, they cost, what, seven green, green, red, and... They behaved the same as they do now, except that they had a build time of one instead of a build time of three. So, like, you'd get them next turn, but then it would be three more turns till you could use them again. And so they didn't really offer the opportunity to, to sync them with Tarsiers in the way that, that, that you now can. Um, so I still think of Scorches as, as units to threaten Breach and deny Absorb, and, like, that's true. But they also are a way you can plan ahead to sync them up with some Tarsiers. Um to deny, absorb, even on the first attack. Or deny, absorb right before your first attack. So that was, I think, a good lesson for me. I, I, I had other inefficiencies, of course, um, but I think I missed a big opportunity by building these Tarsiers so early, and like this Animus, I guess, was like too early as well, because... A couple attack doesn't really do anything. I don't have anything to sync with it, so... I, like, I, I cut my economy to get these Tarsiers out, but they don't do anything. And... My opponent just did a much better job with it, so well played. There goes the win streak. Oh well, it was bound to happen eventually. Axel? Axel? I don't know. Uh, okay, I saw a lot of green and some red. Yeah. So... It looks like just mono green, honestly. Right? 
and player one. Double conduit? Like, yeah, you don't generally love rushing out Gauss Fabricator or anything, but here there's so much green available. You want to build Asteris and Cluster Bolts and Plexos. The more green you have, the better. It's really worth more than drones, I think. So cutting some drones to get green is, is pretty okay in this set. Um, and it happens to time up well so that you get a gas fabricator right away. Which is not like an amazing, uh, oops. Uh, I wanted to do this. It's not like amazing to get out the gas trap ASAP, but uh, it is, you know, since, since your opponent won't, since I, I assume your opponent is mirroring mono green, right? They won't really have any superb defenders to deal with all this stuff. Apparently he's going blue. I don't really believe in that. Um, I think with Plexo... Well, you know, I mean... I say mono green, but one wall is sort of doing a lot, isn't it? You could centrifuge into a Xeno Guardian. That's an interesting thought. I should have maybe gone for that earlier. Um, but no, because your opponent's going to be able to breach the Xeno Guardian pretty soon if you don't invest in any other blue, right? So what if I just do this? I can't even afford the Xeno. No, I could. I could build a Xeno Guardian next turn. That's a thing I could do. It doesn't seem great, though. What if I built, like, Blast Forge, Drone, NG. Next turn, Wall Drone Drone? Alternatively, I could try to focus more on, like, green. Drone Drone Conduit. Plan to defend with Plexos and Force Fields while I just get Asteris or something. I think that getting blue is worth it here. I'll let him kill one NG, but I'll build a wall. And actually, he doesn't even really want to do that because he he doesn't want to have to build a wall this turn. Oh! Oh, all right. Cluster Bolt, huh? I don't know that that's so great for him. But I guess... It is, because this this damage is getting soaked this turn. That's pretty cool. Um, but I can cluster or er, Plexo to guard against it pretty conveniently. Maybe just wall is better though. Wall and maybe force field. Ah, if he holds the steel splitter back, I'm thrilled. So he's threatening five. Yeah, wall force field is a better defense. But then I can't build the two drones, right? I can only build one. I really hate having to build that force field. What if I did something crazy, like cut the wall? Next turn I could get out in the Starry Cannon. But then I don't have a wall, and I really would like one, so... Okay. I don't think I'm ahead here, though. My opponent has way more drones. What's my advantage? Two Gauss Cannons to his Steel Splitter? 
It's not an advantage. Well, I also have the Gauss Fabricator down already, which he doesn't. So there's that, I guess. Again, I would like to build Xeno Guardians, but I don't know that I really want to invest a second Blast Forge in it. And if I'm doing that, then I'm not getting the Asteri next turn either. So what if I do something like this? Maybe this? Then I could Asteri Drone if he does nothing, or Asteri Plexocell if he threatens a lot. Which I don't think he will. Yeah, I'm not so convinced by that Cluster Bolt. Your green is really useful, and I can just Plexo to hold it off relatively comfortably while getting a permanent attacker. On the other hand, he's really getting his economy to skyrocket. And buying a lot more green. So maybe he's totally right about this? Oof. This feels really awful. I don't have nearly enough drones to support this. So, I mean, again, Gauss Fabricator Rush is not actually good. I did it here because I, it felt like I wanted the green and getting it out would be useful. Uh, maybe that's true. But it feels like my opponent has a number of advantages against me. Whereas what do I really have? More attack right this very second, I guess, is the answer to that question. He's been spending his green on, like, cluster bolts, which have put me under a lot of pressure, but they're not, like, doing anything permanently. So maybe I can finally recover from all of that stress I've been under. And, um, like, hang on, can I sneak in another Asteri somehow next turn? Do this and build an Asteri? It seems possible, but only if he doesn't build any more units, right? Because I'm going to lose Wall, a Barrier NG here, and then he's going to be attacking for four... Five. To attack for six, he has to build two attackers and no defenders and not leave anything back. I guess he could do, like, Gauss Gauss Wall to threaten to pop me. In which case, I would have to not build the Asteri. But I think that it's better, rather than saving up for the Asteri, to just do something now. Because he actually can counter the Asteri, and I would be sad about it. So maybe I'm just supposed to do this. Drone up a bit more, replace the NGM losing, and keep pressuring him. Where pressure is just like, let the Gauss cannons go off, I guess. Right, I mean, that that is my advantage. I have substantially more attack right now. Uh, I just need to keep it that way. Maybe this is the idea? I could, of course, try this, like, cut these and save up for a Sari, but I don't have the money to make that realistic. Um, let's just build more attackers. 
Is there some amount he could attack me for that exploits? Yes, if he attacks for five and holds a steel splitter, I'll wish I didn't have this barrier. So let's in fact not build it. Because attacking for five is actually sort of convenient for him. It means holding back one steel splitter, which is a thing he might want to do. So, he back for six. Oh well. Um, but I can sort of semi-comfortably plexo wall here. Maybe build NGs? A conduit? I would like to get one more attacker out somehow, but I don't think I can. So he's attacking for five, which if I do this, he kind of doesn't want to attack with his steel splitters, right? Attacking with all but one steel splitter doesn't even do anything. He has to attack with all of them to accomplish anything. So he, so this is sort of over defending. If I just build the force field, then he has to attack to do stuff. Five. Yeah. I'm having enough trouble spending my green, right? Maybe I cluster bolt him? <laughs> I don't think so. I need. I just need to be able to build enough plexos, honestly. Um, and I have enough for that. So maybe I should float the money to let me build an attacker or two next turn. Along with a wall, like Gauss Cannon Wall next turn is sort of a plan, plus maybe a force field or a plexo or something. We're running out of free Gauss Cannons, which is a bummer. And my opponent has Plexo Cells for days, also a bummer. The one advantage I have is diminishing, i.e. the amount of attack that I have more than him. But maybe it's not. He's having trouble building attackers. Eh. He did manage to build one, so there's that. But the problem is his Gauss Fabricator is going to keep going for a long time. He has built more Gauss Cannons than I have. So, oh, hang on. I don't need to do that force field. I can do this. Five, seven is how much I'm soaking for for free. So in order to do anything... Wait. Five, seven. Yeah. So, but if he just clicks one steel splitter, I'm losing a wall is basically what this means. That's kind of a bummer. And if he clicks three steel splitters, I'm also losing a wall. So hopefully he won't notice this question mark. <laughs> I don't know. Holding the Steel Splitters back is not really that great for him anyway, right? It just means he loses them on defense. So I think, like, he can exploit me by not clicking the Steel Splitters, but it's not really doing him any favors. Because he doesn't want to defend with them. Uh, maybe mm, I'm in some trouble here. <laughs> right. In fact, attacking does nothing this turn. He just loses all the Plexo Cells regardless. So I might as well hold this back. But what else am I doing then? Like, I'm just in a lot of trouble? Yeah. He has as much attack as I do. Mm, he's been having to spend a lot more drones though, right? Mm. 
And he's almost out of Plexos as well. On the other hand, I'm almost out of green. I think he's ahead because he has more Steel Splitters he can leave back. Whereas my Asteri is extremely fragile to ever being breached. It's gonna be close though, isn't it? Well, maybe not. This offers him a breach, I guess. If he wants to, he can kill my Steel Splitter, and then he'll kill my Asteri, and then he'll win. Yeah. He can't defend anymore, but... When he gets breached, he's not gonna just instantly lose like I am. All right, see you later. So I think that here I just, like, didn't build enough drones and didn't get blue soon enough. Like, this Gauss Fabricator came much too soon. I should have focused more on getting economy out and possibly even triple NG, in fact. Since there's no good attackers here. Like, okay, yes, there's no great absorbers, but you can get a Xeno or something. Um, and Asteri Cannons want a lot of economy. Yeah, like, I've made the claim that it's true that green is as good as gold this game, which is sort of true, I think. But... The Gauss Fabricator is just, like, not really doing anything for a very, very long time. And I put myself behind and basically just stayed there forever. It was closer than you might have guessed, but my opponent's high health Steel Splitters. Um, I don't know. I had a very vulnerable Asteri Cannon was a big problem that I had in that game. Okay, so that's a pretty perfunctory postmortem, but... Uh, I, that's going to have to be enough because we are at the end of the episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.